Okay, hello everybody, and welcome back to Dragon Age Keep, where we are going to be working on Dragon Age 2 now. I was not diplomatic, I was sarcastic. Uh, Lady Hawk, how- Can you change the face? Oh, well I guess- I guess that is something that you have to... Upload a picture of. But that's kind of not fair, like... It doesn't really make sense. Um... Because... You should- like, if you're gonna upload this... And it's not that hard to just go in and maybe try to- You can try to recreate your character, you know? But... I guess this is nice because it's like you can for sure get a picture of your your character up, but still, it's a little bit a little bit odd, I think. Like, especially for Hawk, if you have a pretty generic Hawk or whatever, the original default heroes. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, we were not diplomatic. <laughs> Hawk typically relied on humor to defeat up intense situations which she, which she faced in Kirkwall. Yep. Who's this answer? Um. Alright. Wow, there's like not much for Dragon Age 2. I'm kind of surprised. Like, oh, well I guess there's the axe. Okay, that makes sense then. Wait, hang on. Let's, uh, let's do... Let's actually... Do prologue first. Oh, oh, okay, that that part of the prologue. The smallest provider hawk with valuable connections while securing her access to Kirkwall. I'm really curious what happened to Athenryl. We like we saw her in Act Two and then we never saw her again. We joined the smugglers. Um companions. Nope. Oh. I romanced... Okay. I guess the default hawk um, does not romance anyone. <laughs> Freaking romance! <laughs> Thankfully not. <laughs> That's a good one. Nothing could deafen Isabel's free spirit. Hawk found love with her. Meryl finally found acceptance. While still sworn to the Chantry, De Sebastian fell deeply in love with... No... No, no. That's like supposed, I've heard it's like a platonic romance and I'm like, nah. <laughs> like it would have to be really, really like, the dialogue would have to be heartrendingly beautiful because these, it was soulless. But I guess that's how it was with soulless with me is there's never like, it's not like I want to like see all the dirty details, but I at least want to know that like there's like what happened, you know? And with soulless, it just keeps you up in the air. It's actually very, um, it's not like you didn't. But it's like, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. And nobody freaking, none of the developers will confirm or deny. And it's just so cruel of them. Romanced Anders. Um, that's it for, no, there's not. Okay, and I was like, that's not right. Of course I'm friends with Varric. That's kind of a funny picture, though. Um, Bethany, I like her picture right there. She did not, um, she did not die. Um, Bethany became a Grey Warden. No, she... I freaking didn't save her life. After contracting the Blight in the Deep Roads, Bethany was saved by Anders' intervention, leading her to a group of Grey Wardens. Bethany was saved and survived her joining. So they... But they couldn't do the joining in the Deep Roads, could they? Like, they had to have taken her somewhere to do that. Like, to whatever fortress they were staying at. So I think we could have technically gotten her to the surface and then, you know... Sent, maybe gone to the Grey Wardens or something. I don't know, it probably would have taken longer, but... Bethany became a Grey Warden, even though she was kind of unhappy with me about that. Carver died. My friend is playing, and just the other day, um... Like, yesterday, she said, Oh my gosh, because like she's playing as a maid. She's like, ah, uh, she's like, I'm really pissed off at Carver. She's like, he just joined the Templar Order. I was like, <gasps> like I knew he could join the Great Wardens, but I was kind of thinking, I was like, I don't know what happens to Carver when you're, because when you're away, your sibling is always taken away. And Bethany is either a Circle Mage or a Warden, and I didn't know what Carver's opposite thing was, but I thought he'd like get arrested and thrown into prison or something. Carver fell into the blight, yeah. 
No, I and if I if I well when you know someday when Carver is in my group, I will probably have him join the Grey Wardens because I think that he would excel at. I think he would like that from what I've seen of his character. You know, Carver died leaving, leaving Lothering, which was sad. Um, Bethany did not die. She did not die. What? How could she could die? What? She did not live to see the... Oh, that, that maybe if she died in the thing. She looks pretty bad, eh, there. I like that. Like, freaking... If she's in the circle, does she die? Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, how does that happen? Maybe if her approval isn't up high Like, you don't get her approval up high enough? When the fight behind the house was circled with Mage Eye, Bethany was caught up in the struggle. But she came back. She came back to me. She did not die. Uh, we recruited Isabella. Of course, yes. That's a pretty cool picture of her, too. It's kind of annoying. Uh, Isabella did return. I thought you didn't recruit her. Played by her conscience and likely against her better judgment, Isabella returned the tome to Hawk and the Kunari. That'd be a big bummer to have her not come back, you know? Interesting now that it's an option. I keep having to click on Anders' face. Rivals. Aww. While well, Varric and Hawk disagreed on a number of points, the dwarf's respect for the champion runs deep. Okay. Varric considers Hawk to be his best friend of his day. Varric. He's such a good friend. Bartrand was not killed. Interesting. I, I thought he was basically scripted to die. So was bringing Anders what made him live? Or do we have the cha choice either way to keep him alive or to kill him? Interesting. Bartrand did not die, though. Help Varric discover the cause. I did. And my home was destroyed. Me. All right, do we do manifestations there? Yes, we did. We discovered the cause of the haunting. It was a dang nab little... Shard of red lyrium. Farrick most certainly did not keep the red idol lyrium. Although, I did, someone did tell me in the comments that um, if Varric keeps the red idol, the red lyrium idol, he gets two more extra slots on Bianca and nothing else bad happens because in Dragon Age Inquisition, you, uh, at that point, I think he gives it to Dagna to study or something. Or, um,. Or, um, oh, uh, what's her name? But Bianca. <laughs> I, was like, I was trying to say Briala. Obviously, it's Bianca because Bianca Bolena. Because, because, because of so many reasons. That's why. That's the name. Duh. He did not keep the Red Lyrium Idol. Um, Fenris is alive and well. <sighs> I saw that you could freaking return him, and I don't know why you would still do that. How could he be pursued? You have the battle. Oh my gosh. Oh, is that if you have to turn against him or something? Like, if your his approval isn't high enough and you side with the mages? Fenris is alive and well. Survived the numerous times on the life and the chaos and Kirkwall alike. Companions. Didn't give Isabella. Of course I didn't give Isabella to the air shock. She eventually escaped. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She would like. There's no way they could keep her. She was not turned over. Hmm. Hang on. <laughs> I'm seeing this now. Like, oh my gosh. Um. Oh yes, she did. Did I approve? Um, but, um, uh, did I technically approve? That's confusing, because there was no, the option I chose was like, you may have thrown, I chose the middle route on that one, that you may have thrown 
that's that's oh um I guess I technically approved even but I didn't perhaps move by the major claims that I think such things were inevitable and it was basically it was going to happen regardless of Anders actions so you could say that Anders actions were actually futile useless like he because it was going to happen anyway. He just happened to have his one... He happened to be the one with his hand on the trigger. You know what I mean? So... But I didn't kill Anders. Anders? Approval? Actions? Let me know what you guys think on that one. I'm not going to lock anything in... Um, on that. Because I was trying to decide, because I don't think my hawk, either way, I think she didn't approve that he killed innocent people, but it was also, this sort of a thing was inevitable, but Anders is alive and well, which is really, really going to be interesting. Choose this answer. Well, it's probably not going to be as interesting as I wish it would be, but it's going to be interesting. Um... I think my dog's dreaming. Aveline most certainly did. Grounding Aveline as the stress of her work increased. Yay! Um, Aveline stayed with us. Oh, different opinions. So that's, I think if you became a rival with her, she would eventually leave you. She stayed. Um, blah, blah, blah. Fenris is alive and well. Meryl, after being expelled. What is this? What is this? Meryl did. Oh, is this me? Like, or is this Hawk or whatever? Why is there. That's like a Templar thing in the background. And that is a mage sunburst. Yeah, she stayed. What do you mean, stay? Like. Like, did you... Oh, this is gonna... Oh. Meryl is alive. Oh. Does she... Maybe if, maybe if her approval isn't high enough, and if you choose the Templars. She is alive and well. I kind of wish I'd done more with Meryl. Like, I feel like there was just something missing there. I know a lot of people like her because she's so cute. And I liked her, and she was cute. But at the same time, I wish there had been something more. They could have done so much with her. I don't know. I don't know. Meryl did not destroy the Illuvian because we were not rivals. Yes, she refused to abandon the mirror, which ended up being bad for her. Well, I guess more than anything, it was bad for, well, actually, no, it wasn't bad for Meryl's clan. It was my stupid deciding to not go back and do, like, the I will take responsibility thing. Because at the time, I was like, I don't want to take responsibility for her actions. Like, it's not that I don't want to, actually, it's that... Everyone's been keeping Meryl safe this whole time. Varric's been keeping her protected from the real world. Her keeper basically paid the blood price for Meryl. I was like, maybe it's time Meryl actually, like, does take responsibility for her actions and does face the consequences for her actions. So while I would have loved to have saved her clan, um, at the same time, maybe that would be, this will be enough that Meryl will snap out of it. I don't know. Mer well, not snap out of it, just... Just... I don't know. And maybe having her clan could have grounded her, but I think the, the more I play these games and the more I read the books, the more I look at the Dalish and I kind of want to start... Like, I held them up so highly for the longest time. But the more I play, the more I'm like, you guys just... I keep thinking of Sarah's little song, like her line where it's like, you know, why change the past when you can own this day, you know? But it's like, at the same time, like, I would never, ever suggest that they stop searching for their past, for their culture, because that's a huge part of who they are. 
the searching is a huge part of who they are. The, the like, it's their history. It's their culture. They deserve to have it. That it was taken from them was wrong. And I don't blame them in the least for choosing to, to try, at least, and at least to stay alive and away from human rule. If that, if that even if they're not actively searching out rel- ancient elven relics and stuff, like, that they, they choose to live separately. That is their, their right, their prerogative. But at the same time, again, reading the book about the, emp- the empress of Orlais, Celine, and everything, it's like the Dalish, some of the clans, not all of them, some of them ha- are just complete dirtbags. Like, they refuse to see city elves as people. Like, uh, the Marathari Mar- 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 clan, like, it, it, it surprised me some of the, some of the actual clan members were very hostile, but, or like they said some things about city elves that they did, but they have Paul, Paul in there, you know, and like, they welcome him with open arms and origins, you know, and I think that, that that should be what the Dalish do, is that maybe occasionally go by and say, hey, like, do any elves, like, like somehow, like, send somebody in and say, do, do, do any of you want this life, you know? And it's a hard life. It's not an easy life, but neither is life in the alien age, and at least you can walk with your head held high as a Dalish elf, you know? But, I mean, I don't know. It's a very complicated twisted issue it seems and maybe it just could be simpler but i just feel like the way the daily they're like they're not true elves anymore to the city elves and i'm like they're as elf as you are and maybe it has part of the partly the fact to do that a lot of the dalish elves um actually their lineage just they they did they descend from surviving from nobles who survived arlathan and refused to be subjugated and i think a lot of the the elven alienage population is full of like the servants who weren't taken in by who were abandoned by their nobles or whatever you know or who just did not have the strength or the the power like the actual power to withstand or whatever or to to run away or they didn't have the means to get away or anything and they were enslaved and or no not the dalish sorry no, not not arlathan um Halam Sharal, right? That's what they that's what they called their second home was Halam Sharal. But um Yeah, it's I mean it's 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 incredibly sad what happened to the to the elves, to the Arlathan, to the to the ancient elves. And I don't begrudge the Dalish in their search, but also knowing the events at the end of the Trespasser, now you look at the Dalish and you just kinda you do, you kinda see them as children scurrying after fragments of stories that they can barely comprehend and that they piece together as best they can and get kind of a twisted outcome. And it makes you think, how much of this game's lore is actually that way? You know, like, how much of the Chantry stuff is stuff that's just been, like, pieced together over the centuries or made shinier or, like, you know, buffed out the hard edges on, you know what I mean? And Subby gave me this, like, she, like, told me about this, like, crazy theory about like Andraste and Chantry and stuff and it was it blew my mind like I was like walking around in circles and like typing I was like oh my gosh like what the heck? I was like this is insane like it's a fan theory but it it makes sense in a lot of ways and it was it blew my mind but it, it would it would mean it would mean that things were completely skewed and I've I've thought since since I played the Sacred Ashes temple in origins i was kind of wondering how much of the chantry rhetoric is actually subject to what happened in a way in a way subject to what happened to the ancient elven pantheon like what the dalish perceive now as their pantheon and their religion and everything is the chantry sort of suffering from something like that as well so maybe the maker isn't as much of a dirtbag as he's written to be <laughs> But I don't know, and who is the maker, and who is, uh, like, is he the actual god? Like, I have no idea, it's crazy. Talking with you guys about stuff like that has been really, really cool. So, there's that, ha 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 But, um, Meryl did not, she stayed with us. We did recruit Sebastian. And we did not, he did run, run away. 
Didn't kit you can kiss Talos? Why why is that a big deal? Romancing Kunari spies is really the wisest thing a champion can do. One more thing serious could come of the sh come of it in the short term. You know what was weird is that they acted like she was coming back in the game. Like maybe in the third act she was gonna like swoop in or something. She didn't. I realized that after a while. And maybe they meant, oh yeah, she'll show up again when the time is right or whatever, you know? But you think she would have shown up sometime during the game. So I flirted with her, but I didn't I didn't kiss her. I didn't realize she could do that. I didn't make Talos angry. How how related to the Kune? I did not oh, never met Talos. Nice. We I'm pretty sure we parted as friends. Does something come up in Inquisition with that at all? Like, do you get any War Table missions? Kind of sucks that, like, it, you know, a lot of the events in Origins and Dragon Age 2 are sort of relegated to um, War Table missions. It's like, oh, well, okay. But, okay, now we'll do Legacy, because we did, did all the companions. Yep, yep, yep. Didn't kiss Talus, blah, blah, blah. That is going to change some things. KK. I like that, at like, Varric is, like, in importance, is right up there with your, uh, romance. Kind of sad you can't romance him, but also I think it's kind of nice to just have, like, the straight man, I guess. Not in, like, you know, terms of, like, you know, sexual preference or anything. But he's just there as, like, the comedic relief, almost. And he's, like, he's, like, your best friend, you know? So it's kind of nice that that, 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 that that doesn't have to get muddled up. And you can just have this, like, for sure one best friend who's got your best interests at heart. Okay. I fought against the Templars. While risky, I managed to defend... Oh, um... Hot commits Templars take their search elsewhere... Oh, and these are the mages. Jeez. Okay. Um, well, what? Specifically? Oh, okay. Blood mage. Um, we fought against the Templars. I don't know. I, I didn't, I was trying to do this. Convince the Templars to take their search elsewhere, but it ended up becoming a fight. Um... What do you mean you didn't... So this is what confused me, sort of, is that... Um, same as what you not from the Canary or from the mercenary group, I guess. Oh, so I guess you di if you didn't... I wonder how that would play out if you just didn't do that? Huh. Like, would not just not doing the quest do something with that? Or do you actually have to be like, no, I'm gonna kill you? Who? Oh. Oh, does she like, um, does she show up in Inquisition somehow or at all? And I think some of the people from, maybe from Origins, but I'm pretty sure from Dragon Age 2 can actually show up as, um, agents in Dragon Age Inquisition. So that's going to be interesting. I haven't read that section of the, the lore book that I got because... I want to kind of figure it out on my own, but I also want to be aware that they're that they're around. When I do my like official playthrough for like Erica for like my official Inquisition canon run or whatever, um, I'm gonna be really, really thorough. I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna basically try to complete everything in the game. I actually I had my uh, may, well, no okay I will do the shards but freaking I'm gonna maybe might just shoot myself in the foot but um I I got a friend into Inquisition like uh maybe a month ago a little less like three weeks ago and I went uh, I had to go over occasionally to watch her play and she when she got to the trespasser um. I went over to watch her play for a bit, and she went to her saves, and she had, like, you know, 85, 90, 95 hours spent in the... And then all of a sudden, it jumped up to, like, 451, 456, and I was like, is your game glitched? I'm like, did your save... I, I honestly thought her saves had messed up, and, like, had somehow just became, like, these, like, random numbers or something, or, like, had just, like, just, like, done something really weird, and... 
she was like, no, that's accurate. And I was like, well, for, I'm like, did you not save it all? And apparently she did not save a lot because she wanted, she didn't want to go back and redo things. She wanted to try, try, to, try to keep her first playthrough, like, clean or whatever. I don't know. But, I mean, I get it, right? But I don't know how you would say that. Um, her true, whatever, true first run or whatever, dealing with the consequences of her decisions. But, yeah, she just, like, didn't save or she would, she was, she was just using, the, when she did save, she would just use, like, the same save file. So, you know, it was, like, 99, like, 100, and then she would save at 102, but on the 100 file, and then, like, at 105 on the 102, like, the one that had been the 100 file. And so she just kept using the same exact save file, and I was, like, oh, my gosh. I'm, like, I think my first playthrough with the DLC, even though, not, even though I didn't finish all the, like, I didn't finish Descent, I think I maybe spent, like, 200, I mean, a little over 200 hours in the game. Like, holy crap. But apparently what she would do is she would go into each new area, like the, like the Hinterlands and, like, the Fallow Mire. And she's like, she's like, after, she's like, at first I was opening areas as soon as I had enough points. She's like, but then I just decided that I, she didn't want to have all those quests hanging out in her journal. And so she would completely scour an area for everything that was in it. She had, like, all the mosaics done. The only thing she didn't do was the Astrariums, which I'm like, that's what I want to do next time for sure. She did all the shards. She did everything in each area before she left it. And I was stunned and amazed. Because so this is a friend who's, like, she's really good at playing, like, she plays, like, Game Boy Pokemon a lot, but she never really got into, like, the first game I ever really got her into was Mass Effect, right? And she, like, blew through those really quick, too. But it's, like, I did not expect her to put this amount of detail and work into it. Like, she just went nuts. And I was like, oh my gosh. And when she finished Trespassers, she, like, sent me, like, all these, like, GIF, GIF things and, like, all my pictures. And she was just, like, freaking out. She was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, I know. And then for her birthday the other day, my other friend and I, friend that you guys, some of you may remember from some of my playthroughs, um, we went out to GameStop and got her the hard copy of Dragon Age Origins, Awakening, and Dragon Age 2. <laughs> So that's what she's been doing. <laughs> I have ruined her life. <laughs> In a good way, though. She died. Uh, boop, 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 act one. I did look for Ghislaine's wife. Freaking, I did. I did, I did not. I did not tell the truth. I did not. I spared him the grizzly. That was kind of a funny scene where she was like, <gasps> like, put her hand up, and then she was like, no, you don't want to know. Okay. And then... I wonder why that's significant. I did not blackmail Thrask. Oh, right, because of his daughter. Nope, nope, nope. I did not. I wonder how things would have turned out if I'd have done that. I kind of actually want to... Maybe I'll go in and, like, I will just look at, like, the defaults for all of these and kind of see... What, especially for Dragon Age 2, I'd like to see what the defaults were. Um, did I did return the cargo to Martin. Because I was like, I don't know, man. You can, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> K Kelder? Oh, no, I killed him. Yep, the deeply disturbed man. Son of a magistrate. He was fixated on elves and murdered several of them, claiming the demons in his head forced him to do so. I don't know if that's the case, honestly. I don't know. I have no idea if, like, he just was actually mad or or what. But it was it was it was kind of it's kind of interesting the the way that was that way that went. <laughs> Danzig. I did kill him. While searching for Fainrael, Hawk does not kill the slaver. How do you not kill him? Like, oh, I think because I chose, like, the specialty option. Is there, we probably could have, like, worked something out, I guess. But I chose a specialty option where I antagonized him by putting a knife to his throat. Of course I killed him. It was a dirt bag. I did solve the mystery of the missing miners. Jeez Louise, did, like, the original hawk, like, not do, like, the default hawk not do anything? I solved the mystery. Uh, it's fine, it's, it's fine, don't worry about it. Uh, Iduna, 
Who are you? Oh! No, we kept her alive. Oh, uh, exotic wonder from the east. Did not die from the breaking of her compulsion. If you brought a mage along, she would stay alive. But if you didn't, you would stab her. So that was interesting. Um, yes, she's alive. She was. I don't know if she probably is dead now. Um, didn't blackmail. Sent Fainrail. I did send Fainrail to the Dalish. Nope, sent him to the Dalish. Which made a really interesting scene for the Keeper coming into the city. I quite liked that. It was small, but I liked it. Kiran is, is reinstated, or Karen. No, so that, that's the only two options. You can kick him out, or you can keep him in. I wonder how, I wonder if he would have, would have turned like Samson. Like, turned into Samson. Sort of. Or, like, helped him. Like, when you do, like, in Act 3, when you do the, um, quest to, and you figure out they've kidnapped Bethany. And he's like, I'm so sorry. Oh, Kara. I was like, Karen, no! <laughs> you know what they didn't have in the Origins? They didn't have me de defeating one of the Forbidden Ones. Um, Gax Kang. I was reading up on them a little bit the other day, the Forbidden Ones and the Forgotten Ones, and... Um, cause I was reading the book again, the, the one about the Empress, and, uh, you encounter Imshale in there, and I hadn't realized it, I mean, I had seen the names of the Forgotten, or the Forbidden One, yeah, the Forbidden Ones before, but Imshale is one of the four f Forgotten Ones, Forbidden Ones. Um, and I guess the, the Enigma thing, oh, that I didn't quite get all the little notes about the Enigma... Uh, or, like, the Enigma of Kirkwall, but it's, like, the group of Seekers who were trying to find why Kirkwall was the way it was, and, uh, like, built the way it was and what its purpose was. Um, but they talk about... They talk about Zebenkek, I think. And so we killed Zebenkek, and we killed Gaxkang. But I have to wonder if they're actually dead, because they're, like, demons... Um, but Imshale features in the book with the day he's actually uh, bound by the Dalish clan that Empress Selene encounters, and that does not go over well any, any for really anyone. <laughs> um, but um, he also has like this whole page like dedicated like a letter he like writes in the um, Dragon Age lore books, and it's quite intense. He's pretty freaky, um, but he's really cool. But you encounter him in Ampriest Julian in Inquisition, and then you can choose to battle him there or not. Um, so that's a forbidden one you encounter in every game thus far. And the only one left is, like, the unnamed one, I think, or something. Which is really very interesting. And they can't be connected. The forbidden ones and the forgotten ones can't be connected well, they maybe I don't know, because, like, are we killing, like, the things that came before the gods? Like, I kind of think that, like, the Forgotten Ones, the Elven Forgotten Ones, are, like, I don't know. They could be the actual gods, but they could just be, like, mages that are very powerful, that, that, the, that, the, group just, that the group as a whole decided to, like, be like, nah, you're not cool anymore because you became non-corporeal and we're angry at you or something. I don't know why. I don't know why they'd be angry, but hopefully we'll get more on that in the next game. I did. No, I defended him. Katojin. Oh, I right. And my friend was like, what's his name? I'm like, Sarabas, because that was his name. This was just the name that, that the Chantry sister gave him. I defended him. <laughs> I wish. I heard people were saying that he might have, he was supposed to be a companion. Oh, wait. He was supposed to be a companion, but because the game got cut, you know, it was rushed and everything, that he got cut. I wonder if that's kind of the thing with Talus, too. Karas. Oh, I did. That was way back. But that was... That was with the Starkhaven mages. We chose to kill... the temp To fight the Templars. Yeah. Well, okay, then hold on a second. What was it? Oh. 
Yeah. No, oh, this is what hap this is what happened in the end, you know. Cross. Um, okay, so that's act one then. It doesn't oh it well oh I guess uh like the expedition or whatever it wasn't really in there, but you kind of do that with your companions. <clears throat> Basically, the end result of the expedition is if your sibling does dies or not, or if they go to the the not, the other option. Killed gas card. And oh, oh yes. Um, he. I didn't kill him, but he died. He was killed. I didn't kill gas card. Okay, let me I'm gonna double check that one too. Or at least write it down. I'll probably wait and see what you guys have to say because sometimes find trying to find things on the internet's ridiculous and if you guys have first hand knowledge, I'll just see what you guys have to say. But I guess I'll leave it unlocked. But I didn't kill him. Um I did discover the looter. Um Let's see. I... Yevin? Find his sons? What? Uh, Mara was rescued from the Darkspawn pursuing him. His brother, Ewan. Ewan was this was... Okay. So, Marin's the favored one, it looks like. Or no, Ewan was rescued at the expense of Marin's life. Marin was rescued. Interesting. I did not encounter him. What was that? Oh. Uh, what? I did discover who was... Um... No, okay. I did not do this, but I discovered. Okay, okay, let me just. Okay, whatever. Let me just escape that one. I. That's like the basic one, though, right there. Is it just because I'm trying to like mess with it or something? I don't know. Uh, interesting. Interesting. 